If you're going to have a strong faith, you've got to have a strong diet of truth. You've got to have a strong diet of biblical truth in particular, and you've got to read it, and you've got to study it, and you've got to meditate on it, you've got to memorize it, you've got to internalize it, you've got to put it on sticky notes on your bathroom mirror, you've got to have it as a screensaver on your computer, you've got to do all sorts of things so that you're constantly bumping up against the truth that builds your faith. I would challenge you never to let there be an environment that you inhabit through the day that doesn't have some sort of reminder of the promises of God. We're going to jump into God's Word tonight, and so if you've got your Bible, I want you to go to Romans, Romans chapter 4. We're going to look at just a few verses in the middle of the chapter, and we're going to talk around the subject, how faith gets strong. How faith gets strong. There's one person who's excited about that. How faith, how faith gets strong. I don't know if you realize this, but your faith isn't fixed. Your faith isn't stagnant or static. That your faith can mature. Your faith can grow. Your faith can increase. Your faith can decrease. Your faith can get stronger. Your faith can get weaker. The level of your faith is not static. That God never intended it to be that way. That Faith is something that is meant to grow. It's meant to be elevated in our lives. It's God's desire. It's God's design. And growth in your faith is not automatic. It's not something that just happens. It's not a foregone conclusion of the Christian life that once you say, I'm going to follow Jesus, and you put your faith in him, that all of a sudden you're on this rocket ride to heaven of accelerated increased faith. You may end up in heaven, and if you put in your faith in Jesus, you will. But that doesn't mean that your faith will accelerate day after day through this life if you don't cultivate that. The follower of Jesus has a responsibility to take steps in their walk with God that build their faith. You have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. So can I ask you tonight, what are you doing to make your faith strong? Or maybe better yet, do you know how your faith gets strong? How does your faith accelerate? How does your faith grow? Because there are some Christians, even in the room tonight or watching online, and when you think about your own faith, you look at it and you acknowledge and recognize it's failing or it's faltering. There are others, and you look at your faith and you say, well, no, I feel like I'm growing and I'm on the right track. I'm victorious. What's the difference? It's faith. Because in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, John writes, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So there are some people who are overcoming, and there are some people in the room who are being overcome. And what's the difference? The difference between the two is faith. The strength of your faith, the sure-footedness of your faith, the growth of your faith, the acceleration of your faith. So if strong faith is the difference between being overcome and overcoming, between failing and faltering and being victorious, how do you cultivate strong faith? And as we evaluate that, how are you doing in your walk with God? And in Romans chapter 4, Paul is talking about justification by faith, and in the middle of that chapter, he references a story, and in his reference to that story gives us some really keen insights into how we understand faith and the growth of faith and the growth of strength in our faith happening in our lives. And you may not know the Old Testament story, but Abraham and Sarah are these Old Testament figures, and They have an angelic visitation, and part of that, uh, God has already told them. God has already told Abram. He's made him a promise, but now in this angelic visitation, Sarah gets this promise delivered to her that she's going to bear a child, and she laughs. She can't even fathom how that could be possible. They're, They're really well advanced in years, and yet God has made this promise. God has declared it to both of them. 
And Paul tells us now how they processed that promise to see it come to fruition, how they acted in faith. Romans chapter 4 and verse 18, in hope he believed against hope, that being Abraham, that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. This passage is a case study in how faith grows. How does faith grow? How does it grow strong? And especially it's a case study in faith growing in the midst of you waiting for a miracle. Some of you are waiting for a miracle. I want you to understand that in that moment and in that season, your faith doesn't come to a standstill. It doesn't come to a halt. In fact, what God wants to do in the waiting is produce a strength that you didn't have before you started waiting. He wants your faith to grow, to accelerate, not to wink it. He doesn't want you to shrink back. He wants what happened in Abraham to happen in you. That as you wait on the fulfillment of what you believe God has promised to do in your life, your faith accelerates to trust him and look to him. It grows. You grow strong in faith. So how does that happen? Three insights from this passage into how faith grows strong. The first is, faith gets strong by feeding on God's Word. Your faith gets strong as you feed on God's Word. Go back to verse 18. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. Okay, we need to pause right here. What is faith? Faith is not a hunch. Faith is not the power of positive thinking. Faith is not you just knowing everything is going to turn out all right in the end. None of that is faith. Faith is something different. Faith is taking God at his word. Faith isn't just believing God can do it. Faith is knowing that God will do it. And that's not my quote. That comes from David Martin Lloyd-Jones a pastor and theologian of the last century who preached and taught through the book of Romans verse by verse over the course of years, and in studying this passage, came to the conclusion that faith is not your mental assent to the reality that God can do something. It is your bedrock, concrete, foundational understanding and commitment to the truth that God will do something. He is true to his word, and if he said it, you can take it to the bank. It's who he is. Okay, so this is faith. So real faith, strong faith, is deaf to doubt, and it is blind to impossibility. It is deaf to doubt, and it is blind to impossibility. Why? Impossibility should not be part of the Christian vocabulary. It shouldn't be a part of your vocabulary when it comes to the things that you need or the things that you look out on the horizon of your life and go, how would that ever? You need to just pull it back in and go, but God, but God, but God, like he can, he can do anything. I can believe him for anything, no matter what I've been told is impossible, no matter what I've been told is my condition, no matter what I've been told is my new reality. God may speak a better word over my life that changes things in a second, in a millisecond, but I've got to feed on God's word. That's my first response. How does my faith grow? You've got to feed on God's word. In ancient societies, people spoke to be remembered, and they listen to memorize. Why? Because they were verbal cultures. So that this is way before the invention of the printing press. This is way before anybody, or at least most people, could read. And so Abraham comes from that kind of ancient society, ancient culture. He came from the ancient Near East. So people spoke 
to be remembered. They listened to memorize. I don't know if this is news to you, but Abraham didn't have a copy of the Old Testament. Didn't have that. He had to remember what God said and rehearse it in his mind. So Abraham remembered. He knew what God had said to him, and then he let that track play over and over and over in his mind. Why? Because he knew in doing that, he was growing strong in his faith. If you aren't strong in your faith, it is very likely a result that you are weak in your diet of God's word. Because if you're going to have a strong faith, you've got to have a strong diet of truth. You've got to have a strong diet of biblical truth in particular, and you've got to read it, and you've got to study it, and you've got to meditate on it, you've got to memorize it, you've got to internalize it, you've got to put it on sticky notes on your bathroom mirror, you've got to have it as a screensaver on your computer, you've got to do all sorts of things so that you're constantly bumping up against the truth that builds your faith. I would challenge you never to let there be an environment that you inhabit through the day that doesn't have some sort of reminder of the promises of God. Why? You need it. I hope that as you read God's word in the morning, and just by the way, Sundays and Wednesdays are amazing, but that's not enough for the diet that you need to feed your faith. That as you get up in the morning, you're reading God's word, and as you're reading it, you're picking out part of it to meditate on, to chew on, to carry with you through the day, to build your faith. So strong, great, strong faith grows as we feed on God's word, but faith gets strong also as we focus on God's promise. It's not enough to feed on God's word. That's a great start. It's a necessary step in growing the strength of our faith. But guess what? That strength accelerates then as we choose to focus on certain things. We choose. Look at verse 19. He did not, this is Abraham, weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver. That's an astounding statement. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. Faith gets stronger when we determine where we're going to focus our attention. Because you have a choice. I have a choice. We choose what we focus on. We choose what we give our attention to. We choose what we give our thoughts to. And our focus is a huge issue in the life of faith because our focus can have major ramifications for the weakening of our faith. What weakens your faith? What weakens your faith is when you focus on yourself, when you focus on your problem, when you focus on others who have a problem like you have, when you focus on the people who don't have the problem that you have, when you focus on all the things you've tried to do to remedy the problem that haven't worked, when you focus on all the feedback loop that is around you about your problem, when you focus on the limitations of the physical world to deal with your problem, when all of those things are your focus, if that's the recording that plays in your head or that's what you constantly find yourself circling back to and thinking about and meditating on and focusing on, no wonder your faith recedes. Why? Because... Your focus can't be on all of the things surrounding the problem. Your focus has to be narrowly focused on the promise. You have to give your time and attention to the promises of God. Notice it doesn't say that Abraham ignored the problem. Doesn't say that. No, he's, he considered his body. He was like, yep, this thing ain't going to do it. He, he considered Sarah's womb. He said, that ain't going to do it. He, he was well aware of the realities. We're not talking about the denial of reality. We're talking about, okay, I see what the realities are, but instead I choose to focus on the promise that God has made. I choose. And here's the powerful thing. Scripture is filled with promises. 
It's filled with promises. Max Licato years ago wrote an amazing book called Praying the Promises. The Puritans talked about the promises. These amazing theologians from the 15th and 16th century. In fact, Thomas Watson wrote this. Listen to these words. Trade much in the promises. The promises are great support to faith. Faith lives in a promise as the fish lives in the water. The promises are both comforting and quickening. The promises of God keep us from sinking when we come to the waters of affliction. Oh, trade much in the promises. There is no condition. Come on. No condition. There is no condition that you can be in, but you have a promise. There is no condition in this room. There's no condition at any campus. There's no condition for anybody watching online. There is not a condition you can name, but for which you have a promise. Trade much in the promises of God. Faith gets strong by feeding on God's word. Faith gets strong by focusing on God's promises. But number three, faith gets strong by giving God glory. Faith gets strong by giving God glory. And I really believe that this is the epicenter of how faith gets strong. Look at this in verse 20. He grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. He grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. What was happening? Was he growing strong in his faith or was he giving glory to God? Both. Simultaneous. He grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. One theologian calls this the secret to Abraham's strong faith. He gave glory to God. And as we think about giving glory to God, maybe we should just take a half step back and say, okay, what does it mean for you and I to give glory to God. I think most of us recognize we can't add to God's glory. Giving him glory is not that. Giving him glory starts with going back to who God is. What God does. What God has done. Giving God glory starts with retracing the character and the nature and the attributes of God. Who is he and what is he like? If you're in a season where there's hardship and difficulty, if you're facing a diagnosis and you just, you're just up to your eyeballs and it's just all you can, it seems like when I talk about focus, you're like, that sounds nice. I just don't know how to do that. I want to tell you a couple of things. One, you can, because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and he's given you a power that's alien to you to do what will strengthen you. But you need to surround yourself with reminders of who God is. You need to surround yourself with the strength that comes, not from you and not from what you can do, but from who he is and what he's done. Oh, there's strength there. You need to remind yourself that he's powerful. You need to remind yourself that he's just. You need to remind yourself that he's holy. You need to remind yourself he's trustworthy. You need to remind yourself, oh, he's good. Oh, you need to remind yourself that he's merciful. You need to remind yourself of who he is because he's the key. He's the key. He's the epicenter of what all humanity is about and all creation is about. And it's his glory that is the epicenter of where faith grows, where your faith gets strong, where your faith gets vibrant. So it's not hard to imagine what Abraham was doing to produce this kind of steadfastness in the midst of his waiting, in the midst of a promise that seemed impossible. What was Abraham doing? He was reminding himself of what he knew to be true. He's omnipotent. He is all powerful. He's omniscient. There's nothing outside of the scope of what he knows. He's omnipresent. There's nowhere I could ever go where he is not. 
God never makes a promise thoughtlessly. He never makes a promise flippantly. Abraham knows, okay, human beings do that, but God doesn't do that. And if God did it, it's as good as done. It's as good as done. Why? Because he made the promise. You're reminding yourself of who God is. Faith is believing God simply because he is God. And we know him. And the more you know him, the easier it is to believe him. David Martin Lloyd-Jones wrote this. There is nothing so insulting to God as to not believe him. Why? Because when you don't believe him, you're questioning his character. You're questioning his nature. You're questioning everything he says about himself in his word because everything he's told us in his word is that he can be trusted. Everything he's shown us through life is that he is good and he does good. And in the end, you will see his glory and you will see his faithfulness and you will see his goodness. And there's no human being on the planet that will look at him and say, God, you didn't do the deal. He will have done what he said he would do. He's true to his promise. He's faithful to his word. You can trust him. You could trust him. So tonight, there are some, and you've come in, you're watching online, you're at the, one of the other campuses, or you're spread across this room, and you're in the waiting right now. You're waiting for a miracle. You're waiting for a promise to come to fruition. Can I encourage you? Don't waste that season. This is a moment where you can do what Abraham did and experience what he experienced. Oh, the extraordinary acceleration of your faith. This is exciting. This is the moment where God, by his spirit, wants to move you forward in him, to believe him like never before, to stand on the promises like never before, to trust him with an audacious resilience that the world can't take away. All they can do is stand back and wonder, how is that possible? Why? Because I'm strong in faith. I'm strong in faith because I'm feeding on God's word and I'm focused on his promises and I'm giving him glory. Thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we wanna let you know that we'd love for you to be a part of our online family. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll be so glad you did because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and it helps you know when we go live for our weekly services. We hope you have an amazing day and thank you again for watching. God bless.